Some people might think whitewashing ended when white actors stopped painting their face black. However, there are still other forms of whitewashing present in contemporary Hollywood. The most frequent whitewashing convention used today is when a white actor is cast to portray a character that was initially written for a non-white actor. Even though the white actor does not play a stereotype, his adaptation of the minority often downplays the significance of the character's ethnic culture, which in turn is a form of whitewashing. Although the insensitive practices of deliberately exaggerating the perceived stereotypes of minorities such as blackface and yellowface have been justifiably retired, whitewashing is still prevalent in Hollywood cinema. Many Hollywood films misrepresent Asians by casting white actors to portray them, causing problems for Asians within and outside of the film industry. The Good Earth's success on the big screen provided Louise Rayner with many opportunities instead of a more fitting actress like Anna Mae Wong, who was denied the role of Olan. If she had accepted the more villainous dragon lady role that she was offered instead, it would have perpetuated the negative stereotypes about Asians at the time. I am definitely this time going to call in the police! Mr. Yunoshi showed audiences that Asians were crazy and angry people. His exaggerated portrayal and extensive yellow facing would have been offensive to any group being misrepresented that way. Imagine an Asian child no longer being able to identify with an idol because the role was played by a white figure. Originally, the characters were intended to represent Asian and Inuit people. In the live interpretation, the main cast is portrayed by white actors. Any involved Asian actors were cast as minor or villainous characters. Throughout Hollywood history, white actors have taken many of the roles intended to be for Chicano Latino characters. Although started in early Hollywood in titles like West Side Story, whitewashing continues in current Hollywood culture in films like Nacho Libre. Nacho Libre particularly stands out as Jack Black makes fun of the Luce Libre culture in Mexico and exacerbates many of the machismo Latino stereotypes as described by Rosa Fergoso in the article The Bronze Screen. The film Casa de Mi Padre has a similar effect as it tries to fit Will Ferrell into a Latino Kyle role. Garcia Bernal, Diego Luna, Genesis Rodriguez, and introducing Will Ferrell. Yo soy Armando Alvarez. Do you speak American? No, señor. No habla americano. Films like Casa de Mi Padre and Nacho Libre help show the lack of respect that Hollywood has for Latino Chicano culture. Not only did white actors take ethnic roles, Asian Americans and Pacific Islanders had to create white aliases in order to land roles. Merle Oberon, an Academy-nominated actress from 1928 to 1973, had a complicated history of her birth, given she had to lie about her nationality. Oberon, throughout her acting career, claimed she was born in Tasmania, Australia. It wasn't until 1978 that she would publicly reveal she was in fact born in Bombay, India, as Estelle Merle O'Brien Thompson. Oberon was born under a white father and Eurasian mother. She took on the Oberon name after her first breakthrough in England, which carried over to Hollywood. This persists a modern day with Chloe Bennett. And uh, it became so frustrating to me, and I remember thinking, God, it's so... I remember agreeing, like, oh, yeah, I'm not white enough for this part. Like, wow. this should go for the white... This should go to the person who's white. Chloe Bennett is another case of needing to change her luck in order to receive movie and television roles in the States. Born in Chicago as Chloe Wang, she is a Eurasian with a Chinese father and American mother. With difficulty getting roles as Chloe Wang, she changed her last name to be her father's first, Bennett. It is evident that Hollywood has some very talented Latinos and Latinas, but majority of the time, many of those characters that are able to make it in Hollywood films and television shows look nothing like your typical brown skin Latinos. So here's a couple of actors and actresses that have had to adjust their names or physical image to secure jobs in Hollywood. Rita Hayworth may be the most controversial actress that had to literally flip her name to sound more white. Born Rita Cancino, she went as far as changing her natural brown hair to a dark red to broaden the the roles she would land during the golden age of Hollywood. Oscar Isaac is widely popular in Hollywood for starring in films like Ex Machina, X-Men Apocalypse, Star Wars The Force Awakens, and recently alongside Natalie Portman in Annihilation. But this Hollywood gen was born as Oscar Hernandez, but in order to avoid being typecast into the stereotypical Latino roles, he went with the name Oscar Isaac. There isn't anything wrong with Latinos playing white characters or characters that even look white, but what is wrong is when white passing actors of color are preferred over actors and actresses who don't fit the white look. Consumers have stopped actively seeking the infringement of racism in Hollywood because they do not see blackface or yellowface like the old days, but that should not be enough. Smart consumers should exercise their consumer power and support independent films that portray ethnic groups correctly and that help employ ethnic people. 
rather than certain Hollywood films that are counterproductive.